Okay, so exercise 4, uh, we have uh, done this in class where I use a simulation, sim simulation to show that when we turn on the circuit or close the circuit, the current will flow simultaneously throughout. Right? So all the currents will also be equal. So answer will be B. Okay, for exercise 5, uh, the two currents in the two lamps which are in parallel right they will flow and combine uh, at junction q so the ammeter reading here will be the sum of the two currents and the total current reading in the ammeter will be 2.5 ampere okay. okay i'm going to show you a simulation that uh, shows the same thing okay yeah i have here uh, one battery, 12 volts, uh, one emitter next to the lamp, and another emitter. So if I just close the switch, you can see that the emitter reading next to the lamp is 1.2 ampere, and the other on the right side, the emitter reading is also 1.2 ampere because they are in series. Right now, if I were to add another light bulb in parallel, just like the diagram. In exercise 5 okay and also I put an emitter here so emitter will help me to show the current that's passing through the lamp itself okay and uh, this second lamp is in parallel with the first lamp right? and then the lamp on the right side will be the showing the current that flows to the battery or from the battery the total current okay so if i were to close the switch now okay you can see that the current the first lamp is 1.2 ampere and the second lamp is 1.2 ampere and the current that flows uh, from the battery is actually 2.4 ampere and this is the same current that will also flow back to the battery so this total current is the sum of the two currents of the two lamps in parallel right okay so therefore in conclusion we can say that uh, from the two exercises right exercise four when the emitters and lamps are in series the current is the same throughout okay? whereas for the second exercise where the two lamps are in parallel the currents will add up to give the total current in the emitter. Okay, now we look at the next table. Uh, as mentioned, uh, we can use analogy to compare how current flow with some similar systems so that we can have a better understanding of uh, what makes currents flow in the circuit. Okay, so in my example, the first example was in the first row right thermal conduction so in a conductor the thermal energy will flow from a region of higher temperature to a region of lower temperature and that is why it's moving thermal energy and it's caused by the difference in the temperature the difference in temperature between one end and the other end of the conductor okay now in our second analogy, right, we have the flow of water in a water tank. Okay, so usually we have a pump that pumps the water from one end of a water pipe to the other end of the water pipe. And so water is moves along water pipe and it's caused by a difference in the pressure. Right? And this causes the water to move along the water pipe. Okay, a third analogy that, uh, that we can have is uh, a ball is moving. Okay? It moves from a region with higher gravitational potential energy to a region with lower gravitational potential energy. Right? Basically, the ball goes from a, high, a greater height to a lower height. So the ball is moving and it was caused by a difference in the gravitational potential energy. Okay? For electric circuit, uh, this is what we are trying to compare with. Uh, we have 
charges they are moving right charges or charge okay uh, basically it's an electron that is moving or many electrons in fact is moving along the electrical wire and the charge moves from a region with higher electric potential to a point with lower electric potential okay so each point in the circuit we can say it has something called an electric potential so a difference in this electric potential causes the charge uh, to move okay um oh yeah okay i need to have a correction here uh when we talk about um the conventional current right the charge actually refers to a positive charge okay positive charge so this will move from a point of higher electric potential to a point with lower electric potential along the wire on the other hand the electron as we know will move in the opposite direction okay so the electron will actually move from a point of lower potential to a point of higher potential okay but in our normal discussions uh, we'll be using the idea of a positive charge as in uh, what moves in a conventional current okay so below here and see that um, <coughs> if there is no difference in the electric potential between two points then uh, we say that uh, there will be no charge flow or no current flow okay in such a case and we have a short form for this uh, this difference in potential we call it potential difference okay the difference in electric potential we call it potential difference or pd in short so if there is no potential difference between two points we say that pd is equal to zero or potential difference is equal to zero uh, which means no charge or current will flow if there's a current flow it's because there is a potential difference okay so if we are talking about a conventional current flow from the positive terminal to the negative terminal of a battery right this is caused by a potential difference uh, which is given by the voltage of the battery Okay, so this difference in potential or potential difference is 6 volts for a battery. Okay, now we try to show this idea of electric potential on a diagram in exercise 6. Okay, so uh, by convention, we normally show the negative terminal as zero volts that means it has zero potential okay and this battery has a voltage of nine volts that means across this battery the potential difference okay is actually nine volts the difference in potential between the negative and positive terminal which means that the positive terminal actually has an electric potential of 9 volts so the potential difference across this battery will be 9 minus 0 9 volts uh, because the wires are connected together right this wires we assume has um, no uh, has um, little resistance so at C okay we also say that you will have the same potential as at D also 9 volts and similarly, um, the wire connecting from A to B have little resistance. Okay, that means it does not change the electric potential. So at B, the potential is also zero volts. Okay, so with this, uh, we have labeled all the electric potential at A, B, C, and D. Okay, we can now. Uh, label the potential difference 
I'll find the potential difference between A and B. A and B is, is both are zero, so difference is zero volts. C and D both are nine volts, huh? Nine minus nine. The difference is also zero volts. Okay. On the other hand, for A and D, A is zero volts, D is nine volts. So the potential difference we take the higher minus the lower is nine volts. And between B and C, okay, we take the <coughs> higher nine minus the lower electric potential is also nine volts. Okay, so across the battery, right, we can say that the potential difference is nine volts, and this is what will drive current around the circuit. Uh, across the lamp. BC potential difference is also 9 volts and this is what drives a current through the lamp and make it light up.